Hello and welcome to week three. So today we are going to be talking about spiritual grounding and protection. So last week we talked about switching our energy on and becoming really aware of our intuitive feelings inside and we did that through choosing a wink. And I really hope you enjoyed that activity. I know I did when I um, first uh, did it and learned about it. So um, what I want to talk to you about today is actually switching that energy off. And it's really important that you learn to switch yourself off um, because you can find yourself feeling very, very ungrounded if you don't. So um, as much as we practice switching on, we also practice switching off. So I thought what I might start with is a couple of stories that I think illustrate what I'm trying to explain um, far more effectively than anything um, that I could sort of teach you. So the first story I want to tell you about is when I first started reading the tarot, I joined a little um, tarot study group that I was invited to. And as time went on and people got to know me, they asked me what I did and I talked about it and they said, Oh, so you're a clairvoyant, are you? Oh, would you read for me? Would you read for me? And of course, huh, I didn't have my cards with me. Huh. Um, well, I had cards with me, but I had the cards with me that I use for studying and they're all in order of suits and everything. So not my reading cards. And um, anyway, I agreed to read. So I used the cards that the teacher was using <laughs> Where was my connection? And I was in a room with other people. And not only that, a lot of the girls there, their partners were all in the kitchen chatting, waiting for us to finish because um, we'd sort of all get together at the end. And I think if Prince Charming had been there, things might have been a little bit different because he's sort of very aware of what I do. Um, but, I, you know, anyway, to cut a long story short, I sat down with her <laughs> and I started reading. And um, anyway, I got a really good connection. And I was literally, I was, because as you know, I'm clairvoyant, I was having a vision and I was walking, I was actually in this vision and I'd walked up to her front door, down her hall and into her house. And I was seeing things that I couldn't have possibly known. And in fact, the worst part was, it was so intimate. I was seeing things that I was then filtering what I was saying as I was doing it doing sort of doing you know in this connection because I I was aware people were around me and I didn't feel that such a personal reading should start happening with everybody watching me well of course you wouldn't want to know everyone starts to get very excited because the girl in front of me saying yes yes I'm saying this and this and pointing things out and asking her questions she's saying yes 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 so Everyone comes in and I ended up like in this sideshow with people watching me. And of course, I then lost the connection. I felt really, I, I was looking at the cards and I, I couldn't even read the cards. And I was really strung out probably for about three days after because I hadn't protected my energy and I certainly hadn't put any clear boundaries in place. And I felt so watched and observed. It was awful. So, then, you know, and, and sort of, when, you know, if I think about it now, what I should have said was, not today, um, how I read, I often see very personal things and I don't think this is the right environment, I don't have my cards with me. I had so many boundaries I could have put in place and I didn't. So certainly a learning experience for next time. Another experience I had where I certainly put those boundaries in place was I was in the Apple shop. And I'm on my old workhorse computer today, filming today for you. Um, but I was looking at getting an Apple Mac Air, mainly because it's lighter to, um, to carry around in my backpack. And I was looking at it and thinking about it. And the guy that was serving us was helping us and answering questions. And, of course, he started talking about, I said, oh, yes, I'm in business. You know, what do you want your computer for? And I said, um, I'm in business and, um, of course, it came out, what do you do? And, oh, and he just straight away said to me, 
Would you read for me? What? Tell me about, tell me something about myself. Tell me, tell me, tell me. And I just said, no, not here. And there's something about when you sort of put yourself out there, particularly if you say you're clairvoyant, that people just sort of feel like they can say, well, give us a reading. And they have no concept of how special and sacred that space is that we have with spirit where we get those special messages. And definitely, I was getting messages about him. And I just looked at him and I said, not here. What I should have said was, so um, if I buy a computer today, will I be having a discount on that computer based on how much I charge for a reading that you've just asked me for? I mean, I could have been very, very confrontational if I wanted to be. Um, because you don't, I mean, look, hairdressers have this problem all the time. Would you just cut my hair, take a few inches off? Um, you don't say to, you know, I've got someone coming to fix the roof next week. I don't say, well, will you just clean out the gutters for me and will you do this and will you do that all for nothing? No. And so, you know, that's a whole debate on its own, whether you can charge for readings or not and whether you should charge and how you feel about that. But my belief is, is that, yes, you should um, because... This is about you and your own self-respect and the respect of the space um, and the whole process of your talent. But that's, that's for another day. So it's really important to learn those boundaries to protect yourself and to protect the other person because often people don't realise. I remember I was at a party once and I just was talking to this lady and we were talking about... Um, spirituality and she was an extreme skeptic and I just felt quite triggered by that and I looked at her and I told her three things I couldn't possibly have known and I freaked her completely out completely and when I think about it it was you know it was kind of like I thought gosh spirit were you just justifying yourself then giving me that to say <laughs> but it really did freak her out a lot and so it's just not about protecting yourself. It's about protecting the other person as well. If you're in a party, it's, it's not the time or the, the place. So really being in a space where you practice that, um, those boundaries, those spiritual boundaries that protect you from being in a space that perhaps you might not want to be in. I know after the um, tarot study group incident, I had anxiety for a good week afterwards. And I mean, full on stomach churning, turn yourself inside out kind of anxiety. And I don't need to feel that. I really don't um, because it stirred me up so much. So how are you going to manage yourself? Well, if you think about my party example, where the messages came in and I just went and put them straight out there. It's good for you to be able to actually have a conversation with spirit or the process or whatever you want to call it and say, no, not now. And I've actually had um, an example. Oh, look, I'm trying to think where it came from and I can't think where you can actually put a baseball cap on, you know, have, a, have an actual action that you use. You put a baseball cap on and say, I'm switched off now, I'm not reading because I've, I've actually covered my head and I'm not receiving messages right now as you put the cap on, you know, if that's what you need. Um, which brings me to today's activity. So I want you to think about the connection that you have with spirit as being through your five senses. Now, you have your spiritual senses that we have been working on switching on, but you also have your physical senses, taste, touch, smell, hearing, seeing. So the, those five senses. And that's how, as we talked about in last week, we experience messages coming in from the universe, from other people. They come in and they get synthesised inside us into our intuition, but we we receive them or we can manage them in a very concrete way if we tune into our five senses. So how are we going to do that? Well, if you feel yourself um, becoming a little bit ungrounded and you'll 
you'll know the feeling. Everybody has a very different feeling. I can actually feel myself. It's like a tuning in. And I'll have a voice come into my head. And I look, I couldn't tell you who the voice is, what it sounds like. But the person will speak to me and say things <laughs> like, you know, this happened to her. <laughs> it's quite funny. And, um, and so I can actually say, no, not now. But another process you can use if you feel yourself slipping into that connection and it's just not the right time and to keep yourself in a space where you're grounded is to have a process. So you might, now there's chewing gum that I chew called Honest Gum. I haven't got any with me at the moment because I'm on a diet. I must go and get some. Um, and look, anything I mentioned to you, um, if I have an affiliate link or anything like that, I will always tell you. Um, I don't ever, you know, there's, there's, I'm not endorsing anything here. These are just things I use. Um, you might have things you use. And I'd love you to come into our Facebook group and share what you're using. So um, I chew chewing gum. So I'll get a piece of chewing gum and I'll chew it. So that's touch, uh, its taste, its movement or activity and it's quite a grounding activity chewing and it brings me back into the present. Um, I've got a really nice um, lip balm that I use. Um, you can choose one that you like um, and it has, I think, a really nice, it, 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 it's really nice on my lips and it, it smells nice and it's got a nice taste and I'll use that. Um, spray, have a, a nice fragrant spray that you spray around you. I just carry a little sprayer like that with me. And you can breathe the aroma of the fragrance and that will help you. Um, you can have hand cream. So, you know, something that smells nice that you can put on your hands. I'm going to put some on now. Uh, that you can put on your hands. And um, and as you rub your hands together, you've got the tactile, the smell um, that brings you back into reality. One of my favourite oils comes from Perfect Potion. You can carry some fragrant oil and put that, un, you know, under your nose and smell it. And that will help you come back into reality. Um, have some headphones. I just carry mine, just a little simple set like this, the little earbuds in a little blue bag. And I just plug those into my mobile phone. Make sure you have some music or you might go onto YouTube. I'm listening to some tarot lectures on YouTube at the moment. My goodness, there's so many of them, including my channel. <laughs> um, and you can listen to something. It's really, it depends on the circumstances, what's going on around you. Um, another good one is to just do three deep breaths and then shut your eyes, do three deep breaths, open your eyes and name five things in the room. Um, you know, if I think of what's, a, what's here around me, desk, my journal, tarot cards, folders, my purple gnome up behind me. So bringing yourself back into reality in a really grounding way can be super helpful. So what I want you to do is I would love you to go into our Facebook group to the dedicated post. You can take some photographs of your spiritual grounding toolkit. Um, you can talk about it. You can talk about challenges you've had with grounding. Whatever works for you in terms of reporting in and connecting and getting some feedback on our week. I've actually got quite a lot of information in the workbook about spiritual grounding. There's about three pages you can read. And then I've just got a very simple worksheet for you. <laughs> very simple worksheet for you, just where you can write down all the things you think you could have in your handbag as your spiritual grounding toolkit. Um, so important for you to have, even for aftercare. If you've had to be really con confrontational, like I had to be in the Apple shop because he kept saying to me, go on, go on. And I'm like, uh, no, not here, <laughs> not here. Um, and I could have been even more confrontational if I'd wanted to. Um, but, you know, having something nice like 
to to ground yourself is so 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 important so i look forward to seeing you in goodness me week four where we are going to be talking about asking the tarot the right questions take care everybody bye bye